So in this video, I want to show you guys how you can make a really neat wireless director's monitor. The main benefit to this setup is that all the key parts are protected by the cage and also that everything's powered off one battery. It's a very heavy duty cage, which is great for durability. But one thing I did notice is that it really affects the range of the unit and is only usable up to about 50 foot like this. I've made another video showing you how you can attach a much larger external antenna to the nearest receiver and then mount it to this setup. This gets around the signal issue and actually increases the range of the unit way beyond the manufacturer's specifications. If you want to check that out, I've linked that video at the end of this video. So the build is pretty simple and the parts you need are almost all off the shelf components. So these are all the components you'll need except for the battery and adapter as you can really choose whatever you want for this project, as long as it has the right sort of output for this monitor. So to get started on this project, you're gonna to want to get your director's monitor cage and remove the top and bottom plates from the cage. You can then swap out all these Phillips head screws for Allen key ones, as you can get them much tighter and it just means that they're less likely to come loose. You'll then want to screw in the one plate to the outside of the cage and the other plate to the inside of the cage. Take a bit of time when doing this and make sure they are straight as any adjustment later on this will be really hard to do. So once you've done that, flip your unit over and loosen off all the screws on the two inner rails and the arms of the cage. So what this is gonna do is allow you to adjust the full size of the cage. You'll then want to take your nearest wireless HDMI receiver and place it on the inside of the cage. Press the cage together on the unit to make sure everything is kind of kept in place and as tight as it can be. Once you have the positioning right, you can then tighten the cage back up. So once that's done, remove the nearest unit from the cage and then place it on its back. Use the long screws that are only threaded at the tips and then clip them into the mounting holes on the back of the unit. Once that's done, you can take the power wire that will go from your battery pack to your small HD display. You'll then want to take that cable and slide it under the lip of the inner plate on the inside of the cage. Pick up your nearest unit and position the two screws so that they'll slide through the two large holes at the back of the cage when you slide it into position. Be careful that you don't pinch the power cable when putting it into position though. Position the unit so the screws are pressed up against the metal. This will stop them from coming loose. You can then use a large quarter inch nut. These are the ones that you kind of find on the cheap hot shoe plates that you get on eBay. I'm only gonna screw one in on mine because my battery plate actually has a quarter inch screw built into the back of it. And that one's gonna screw down the other side for me. Plug in your power cable to your mounting plate and then use P-clips to kind of keep the cable in place. I'm using a 3 8 to a 1 quarter inch adapter here, just allow me to mount my P-clip in the right place. One big thing for me in this build is that the wiring had to be really neat. I didn't want anything to kind of snag or get caught, so using these P-clips kind of really helps to stop that from happening. So now we're gonna to wanna to get the cabling sorted for the small HD and the nearest HDMI receiver. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is put in the right angle HDMI adapter into the small HD display, and then connect your HDMI cable to the right angle adapter. Now attaching the wiring to the small HD is really simple. You just need four P-clips and some six by 32 screws. The P-clip I'm sorting out here needs to be double the size of the other P-clips, so you can fit the right angle USB cable and the HDMI cable through it. So once that's all done, you can now kind of dummy fit the monitor to the cage. Fit it so the HDMI and the USB cables are on the side where the mounting plate is fitted to the inside of the cage. I set it up so the HDMI and the USB cable only just have enough room to fit in the gap. So once you've test fitted it and made sure nothing is touching or not fitting correctly, you can now plug in the other side of your USB and HDMI cables. This will take a little time as you don't want to have any cables kind of bending too much, but you also don't want to have too many excess cables sticking out the one side. 
it will take a little bit of fiddling and adjusting to get it all looking right, but it's worth taking your time on this, as these cables can damage really easily. Once you have all that cabling sorted, you'll then want to thread your USB and HDMI cable so they're next to each other like mine are here. So that's one of the harder bits to get right in this whole build. But once it's done, you can now screw the monitor to the cage properly. For the inside plate, next to the HDMI and USB cables, I had to use a spacer to fill the gap on the inside of the plate. Tighten it up loosely on that side and then move over to the other side. For this side, I actually removed mine. It was easier to kind of remove it than to fiddle around while it's still on, but you may not need to do this. I used some rubber strips on mine, but you could just use washers instead or anything similar that will kind of fit this gap. I then positioned the rubber separator and lightly screwed the screw into the monitor. I then screwed the plate to the cage very tightly. You'll then want to flip your unit over and adjust the screen to make sure it isn't at an angle. So once you've done that, you can then tighten up both sides of the screen properly. You're almost done now. The last thing we need to do is just tidy up some of the cabling. To do this, I remove my battery plate, but this may not be necessary for you to do. To tidy up the cables, I just use some one centimeter wide Velcro straps. I prefer using these to kind of regular tie straps as they hold perfectly well and are really easy to take off and adjust if you ever need to do maintenance or just basic updates to the unit. So now that's all done, you can power up your unit. The power up time isn't great. Initial boot up time is over 20 seconds. So if you change the battery on the unit, it's gonna be over 20 seconds until the director can see the image again. But if you're leaving the unit on and just powering down the camera and turning it back on, the unit only takes about six seconds to reconnect, which is actually pretty decent. After some tests, I found that my cheap Sony MPF 8800 mAh battery gives over three and a half hours of runtime in the setup, which is absolutely incredible. That means that two batteries could last you a full shoot day. I think there are definitely a few things you could do to make the setup better, such as using a different battery plate, just to make it a bit thinner, or some custom kind of HDMI and USB cables to allow for less cabling generally and give better airflow between the two components. But I do think that it's a really decent setup for the price point. So I hope this guide was useful. I've put a full list of parts used in the description. Any questions you've got, just put them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.